Hello and welcome to the Gratitude and Growth Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Midich, and I am so happy you found your way here. Most of you probably know me as an actor, but what you might not know is I have been on the most transformative journey these last few years. And I've created this podcast to share the discoveries I've had and things I've learned and continue to learn about this wonderful journey we all call life and how to attain joy, peace, and ultimately freedom. Because I think that's what we're all striving for at the end of the day. I'm here to share some tools that can change your life, hone your mental discipline, and empower you to step into the highest version of who you want to be. I'm gonna share my own journey of how I got here, but please do not live from my experience. My intention is for you to live from and create your own experience. Take what works, leave what doesn't. There is no right or wrong here. Just do you. Just be you, okay? Alrighty, let's dive in. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode. Okay, so today I wanna jump into a topic and a word that has almost become a buzzword these days. I see it everywhere, and that's manifestation. I see it across my social media, that's also my algorithm. I see it everywhere, a lot of people talk about it, manifestation, what is it, and I just see, you can manifest your dream house, you can manifest your dream job, your career, all of this. And so I wanted to hop on here and talk to you about it and how I have come to understand it in a way that actually works for me. So let me begin with what manifestation means or what it is. Manifestation is the process by which your thoughts, words, actions, and feelings create things on the physical plane in your life. So you bring into reality that which you see in your imagination. You've probably heard of the book, The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. This book introduced me to the idea of manifestation and pretty much a lot of other people in my life as well. I think it was just the big book of my generation, perhaps. So manifestation is tied to, or the result of, you could say, of the law of attraction, which is one of many universal laws that states that like attracts like. So if you align yourself with what you desire, you will naturally attract it to you. It works under the premise that you are a co-creator of your life. You create your reality alongside the higher power of source, God, universe, spirit, creator, whatever term most resonates with you. But you create your life alongside a higher power. And so by aligning yourself with what you desire, you bring it into your life. But here's the thing, the law of attraction is objective. It doesn't differentiate between positive thoughts, words, deeds, feelings, and negative ones. It simply allows you to create whatever you're aligning yourself with. So this is why I always say, if you're in constant alignment with negativity, scarcity, lack, fear, that is what you will call into your life. The law of attraction is a very real thing that I have experienced time and time again, both calling in loving things and fearful things into my life. But I didn't have a full understanding of it at first, or actually for a really long time. I just focused on the one law, the law of attraction, and I was like, okay, focus on this specific thing and this specific thing and it'll come true. And yes, it does work like that to a point. I think the biggest thing people get caught up in is just this one law, the law of attraction. They think, okay, I'll sit here and think about stuff and it'll magically show up in my life. And that's not actually the way it works. At least it doesn't for me. There are 12 main universal laws and it is about living by them all in harmony. That's the biggest key. Manifestation isn't just visualization, meditation, vision boards, affirmation, whatever else you use. These are tools of manifestation and they are awesome ones, but they are not manifestation in and of themselves. So for example, visualization is awesome because the mind can't tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined. It just can't. And since by nature as humans, we're natural manifestors and we're manifesting all the time, by seeing what we want in a visualization and more importantly, by infusing our body with the feeling of receiving what we want in that visualization, we naturally bring it to us. 
So visualization is important, but visualization on its own doesn't do it for me. Same thing with vision boards. I love vision boards, but I teeter between actually using them and not, if I'm being real. I get inconsistent with them. To be honest, thinking about this episode re-inspired me to build one again, but I'll also explain why I don't use one all the time later on in the episode. Meditation. Meditation is key to pretty much anything in your life because your inner life will reflect directly in your outer life. So it's important to check in with what's going on in there. And personally, I love affirmations. I say them out loud every single day in some capacity. But again, these are all great tools, but manifestation is not any one or a combination of any of these things. Manifestation is a way of life. That is the biggest thing I don't think people get. Manifestation isn't just the tools. I have learned it's how you approach every single day. It's how you approach the good days and the bad days. Manifestation is also directly tied into the other 11 laws, especially the law of oneness, the law of vibration, the law of action, actually all of them. A brief history is these 12 laws were created way, 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 way back in ancient times. And it said that if you live your life by these laws, you will live a life of freedom, happiness, joy, and unconditional contentment. So let's go back to manifestation for a second. For manifestation to quote unquote work, you need to align yourself to the vibration of what you desire. This is the biggest key. And for me, that means how would you feel if you had that thing that you wanted? Your feelings are the biggest creator of your life. And how would you act if you were that version of yourself that you dream of? What are your thoughts that you would think if you were that millionaire that you want to be? What would your actions be if you were CEO of your own company? How would you approach situations, people, the world, money? Now, disclaimer here, I'm not saying go spend money and max out your credit cards like you had a million dollars laying around. But what I'm saying is, what would your relationship be with money if you did have a million dollars laying around? Would you dread paying each bill? Would you complain about the bills that are coming your way? Or would it be more of an effortless tap, tap, tap? Would it be a gratitude with every tap, tap, tap or swipe? Money manifestation is such a huge topic. And there's so many wonderful people out there who are teaching the tools of money manifestation in such a great way. So I'm not going to dive into it here, but I will say a couple things. I think the thing is people get so caught up in manifesting actual money, actual dollar amounts, which isn't impossible. It's not. But for me personally, I've learned it's better to focus on the things I actually desire, not the dollar amounts. I get caught up on the dollar amounts. And the biggest thing with money manifestation, wealth manifestation, whatever you want to call it, is your relationship with money right now. What are your words saying about money? Are you talking endlessly about how tight things are right now? About how the economy is terrible? How there's never enough? Are you stingy with your tips? Do you resent the money that is in your bank account, no matter how little it is? Do you resent the expenses coming your way? If any of those sound like you, let me tell you, I've been there. I really have. I've gotten to a point in the past where I resented opening my online banking because I didn't want to look in there and see debt and see expenses and see everything else. And I really had to work to change that relationship. It took me months. It actually took me almost a year. I'll say that. But I worked, what I did was Okay, so I struggled with opening the online banking, but what I was able to work on first was changing my relationship with money in the outside world. So the first thing I started doing was finding gratitude for every single bill I needed to pay. I started finding gratitude in tipping for excellent service. Do you see what I'm trying to get at? I don't wanna get into it all now, but there is a way, that's what I'll tell you, is that there is a way to be grateful for money even if your bank account doesn't show it in the present moment right now. Which brings me to my favorite topic, gratitude. I'm about to blow your mind. Having gratitude as a way of life makes manifestation 
a way of life. Because if you had all the things you wanted, you would be grateful, wouldn't you? You would love everything that came your way. There wouldn't be any stress or problems. You would feel free. There'd be a freedom to your life, right? If all your dreams came true. So once you're grateful for everything in your life, once you see love in everything, then you begin to receive only love in your life. You can only attract love into your life because everything is love to you. This is why gratitude, even in the tough situations, is so important and why it is the key to manifestation. One way to use gratitude is to break it down in a three-part way. Finding gratitude for everything that has happened in your past, finding gratitude for the present moment, and this one was the hardest for me, finding gratitude for the future. Gratitude for things coming your way. It's knowing the gratitude before something happens that is the key to manifestation. As humans, we usually think the opposite, right? We only give thanks for something after it's been completed or after we've gotten it, not before. Gratitude like this is also correlated to trust in the universe. This is why you are a co-creator. It's not just you, right? The key is to live like you already have it and to know that you do. To walk through your days like you are the version of you that you've always wanted to be. Like you have the house, the job, the car, the partner you've always wanted. Because then you're vibrating at that frequency. And therefore, you'll bring those things to you. You may have heard all this before, but let me share how I finally learned to do this for myself. Because once upon a time, I was in this incredible gratitude-filled place. And I would audition for certain projects and I would feel myself booking them. I'd learned about the law of attraction, and so I sat there and I visualized, and I did all the meditations. I felt myself booking these things, you know? All my fellow actors, you know this feeling. You see yourself accepting the award, or on set for that job, or the money coming in from it, the stardom that it brings, the press, everything. And then, I didn't book the job. And suddenly, I was like, Whoa, universe, what? I thought we had a deal. I was living like I had it, wasn't I? So why didn't I book the job? And the negative thoughts would slowly start creeping in again. My distrust in the universe started back up and there went all the work I had been doing. All the work on myself, all the work on my faith. And this led to years of manifesting inconsistently of manifesting fear, then love, then fear, then love, then fear, then love. And at some point this past year or two, I learned that live like you have it means live the feeling of it. And what does that feel like? Well, it feels like joy. It feels like gratitude. Well, if you're already living joy, then you are already living like you have everything and therefore you do have everything. Stay with me. But you can't manipulate the universe. Like I said, it's objective. It's only going to give you what you truly vibrate at. So if underneath everything, there is still a clinging, a need, a desperation for whatever it is you want, then really you aren't living like you actually have it. Your base feeling is still fear, not love not gratitude, because clinging, because need is fear. Let me break this down for you specifically. So if you're like, I wanna be CEO of my own company, but you need that to happen because you need to be rich, you cling to that and you don't feel like you'll be good enough without it. You need it so that you can prove yourself to others, to yourself. You need it because then you'll be worthy once you have it, because once you have it, you'll be okay. Once you have it, you will have, quote unquote, made it. Need comes from ego, not spirit. So if you're operating from a place of need, you're operating from a place of lack. This is the trick to manifestation. Ready for it? You have to not need anything in your life. You have to feel worthy enough as you are right now. You have to feel complete enough as you are right now. You have to feel like you don't need someone or something to complete you. Genuinely and honestly, that is the catch. 
for me at least. In hindsight, I can see that this is why it was so important for me to sit with my demons and to do that nitty gritty work on myself because I had to clean house. I had to find worth in myself as I am, in who I am. I had to discover and remember that I am enough for myself, all my perfect imperfections and all. Before, I wanted external things to give me that value, that validation to define my worth. Once I realized I have all of those things innately within me for myself, that is when things really started to change. When I'm operating from a place where I don't need anything, I'm free. I experience that freedom that I would feel once I achieve all my dreams. I've learned this is when I manifest everything so easily. From parking spots to things on sale to job offers I didn't even have to audition for. In conversations with God, there was a line that resonated so deeply in my bones and finally made sense of this whole idea of manifestation for me. Because let me tell you, I was getting pretty darn confused. I learned to be in this place of freedom, of not needing anyone or anything. But then I was also learning that I could manifest whatever I quote unquote wanted. But also the books and the teachings said that if I wanted anything, then I was pushing it away further because if I had to ask for it, then I didn't have it. It all gets very confusing sometimes, doesn't it? And then I read this one line and it all made sense. Need nothing, desire everything, choose what shows up. Need nothing, desire everything, choose what shows up. That is the key to it all. Need nothing. Need no one. Be enough for yourself. Know that you are infinite love and light and joy as you are right now. Not in some distant future, in some distant dream. Not when you have that thing or that person right now. But desire it all. Don't limit yourself. Desire the life of your dreams, but don't need it. Desire all the nice material things, but don't need them. Desire the titles, the labels, whatever, but don't need them. Don't wrap up your identity in them. Desire even world peace, but don't need it. And out of everything that comes your way, choose what you want. Choose love over fear. Don't take the job just for the money if you hate it. Don't marry that person if you're only doing it because everyone else thinks it's best for you. Choose what shows up in your life. Choose love, choose truth, choose joy. And the choice truly is yours, no one else's. You are the co-creator of your life. The power is only yours. So again, need nothing. Desire everything. Choose what shows up. Okay, so earlier I said manifestation is directly correlated to your trust in the universe and also your trust in yourself. It can't work without it because to live like you already have everything, you have to know it'll work out in a very deep and real way, unquestioning and resilient. And the biggest part of that is surrender. You've got to know what you want and surrender it and trust that it'll happen. And then here you go. You just keep moving. You listen to your intuition. You listen to the signs that you're getting. The hows of what you want, of what you desire are not up to you. This is where co-creation comes in. They are up to God, to the universe. But you have to take what the universe brings you and you have to move. Mike Dooley said it in a really great way in his book, Manifesting Change. I'm going to paraphrase here, but it's something that has always stuck with me. Your desire is like inputting the destination into your GPS, right? Your desire is that end point. But the route of getting there isn't up to you. That's up to the GPS. But here's the thing. If you never get out of park, you don't move. The worst case is 
You put yourself in drive and you go in the wrong direction for a little bit. You pull a couple U-turns. But either way, regardless, you will still get to the end destination. I think a lot of people think that the law of attraction means you sit there on your couch and you visualize and then things magically appear. I know I went through that phase. But there is another equally important universal law called the law of action. You have to follow inspired action when it hits you, when it comes to you. Now, I'm not talking about the stressful grind of modern living. I'll say this time and again, that is a lie that we've been fed. That's not what I'm talking about. Inspired action is different. It comes from love. It comes from passion. It can be a lot of work, but even that work is enjoyable and effortless in a way. But it is movement. It's not stagnant. You are a co-creator, which means you create alongside the universe. It is a relationship. The universe will do its part, but you have to do yours too. Okay. So I want to wrap up here with going back to why I don't use a vision board sometimes. And that is because I see my life panning out a bunch of different ways. I really do. And I am so happy with all of them. And so choosing one way feels off to me. Focusing on only one career path or one business deal feels limiting. So at times, all I focus on to manifest is just joy, endless joy, endless freedom, a life full of love, laughter, passion, service, and a heart full of gratitude. It sometimes feels inauthentic for me to pick only one specific passion or career or person or thing to bring that to me. I also think that's because my biggest desire in life is to bring as many people to this place of freedom as possible. Millions, maybe even billions. I dream very, very big. Desire it all, right? My desire is to guide people to realizing and remembering who they innately are. To guide them to the tools, resources, books, lessons, teachers that can infuse their life with love and unconditional happiness to inspire people that they have an incredible power over their lives, that happiness is our birthright, not a distant goal that seems unattainable most of the time, to remind people that we have one life, one, and to inspire them to actually live it, to remind them that their deepest desires, their deepest passions are what they are meant to do in this lifetime. And more importantly, that they are achievable. That is what I'm here to do. And so how I do that doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. All that matters to me is that I do it every single day that I wake up. That is my purpose in this life. I know that in my bones. I am a guide to freedom. And for me, freedom is living a life of gratitude. And it's actually really cool. This just came to me today as I was sitting down to prepare for this episode. I am a guide to gratitude. And in guiding you to gratitude, I will guide you through your own growth and to your own freedom. So getting specific with certain visions of how I do that doesn't always do it for me. Because I can do it a bunch of different ways. I do do it a bunch of different ways every single day. And I know I'm a co-creator, but my faith is so strong in the universe that I'm also here for the ride. And I take whatever it brings me to. Because I know, I know through everything I have experienced and through everything I have lived through, I am always brought what is for my highest good. And here's the thing, my highest good is to be of service. So now I send out that desire and I just keep moving day to day. I keep listening to that little voice inside whispering inspiration when it needs to nudge me in a direction. That's where this podcast came from. That's where a few other projects I'm working on came from. I release the desire and I know that it's coming true when and how it's meant. 
and I focus on the day in front of me, on the hour in front of me, on the present moment. This is the freedom of not needing anything to be happy. This is the freedom of unconditional happiness. Think about those words. Unconditional happiness. Happiness that is not conditional on any certain person, place, thing, event. That's also what they mean by enjoy the process, not the end result. That life is about the journey, not the end destination. It's finding unconditional happiness throughout your journey. It's not relying on the destination to bring you that happiness. So the next time you notice what appear to be random synchronicities in your life, remember that they're not random. I believe that there are no coincidences in life. You create everything that comes to you in some capacity. So remember that, use that to empower yourself. And if you can create seeing the same color car as the one you just bought, you can create your dream job, your perfect partner, the house you've always wanted. You really can. It just depends on your belief system and it depends on your relationship with those things. It depends if you are clinging to them for some kind of fulfillment and validation. And if you are, then maybe you're pushing them away from yourself without you even knowing you are, like I did. And as always, it is about gratitude. It really is. So that is a reminder I'll leave you with today. When gratitude is your way of life, manifestation is your way of life. Being in a state of gratitude puts you in a frequency where you already have everything you desire. And so those things will be brought to you. That is just the energetic laws of this world, of this universe. And if you don't believe me, just try it out for a month and see. Alrighty, let's go with an end prompt of money gratitude today, because I feel like money is on people's minds a lot. So today, every bill you pay, every time you tap or swipe your credit card, can you silently say thank you and genuinely feel gratitude for the service you paid for? Maybe it's a hydro bill or your mortgage or rent. What incredible things those services bring to your life electricity, a roof over your head that you didn't have to pay for outright. Woof! Magic, people. That is magic right there. Maybe it's even your coffee at Starbucks or something from Home Depot. It doesn't matter. Tap that credit card and feel grateful for these things that you can buy and how easily you can purchase something that you need or desire. Do you see what I'm getting at? I remind myself to do this often and it really does make a difference. It immediately brings me back to the simple things that I can be grateful for. And it makes me appreciate the money that I do have or the money that is available and accessible instead of focusing on the money that I don't have. And you know what? Maybe you walk around today with the feeling of having $5 million in your bank account. Or tomorrow, decide to play make-believe for a day and live one day from the feeling of that. Just the feeling of that. How would you think? What words would you use? How would you look at this world? Is it different than how you're feeling today? Just something to note. Okay, thank you so much as always for tuning in today. I hope this left you with inspiration or just awareness of manifestation, of the power that you have, of the co-creator that you are. And if this was a totally new topic that you've never heard of, I hope it just got you thinking. I hope it invoked your curiosity. Okay, have such a wonderful day. Blessings to everyone. Much love. Bye for now. Thanks so much for checking out today's episode. If you resonated with what you heard, hit that subscribe button and maybe send it to someone who you think might need to hear today's message. If you want to stay up to date and connect with us on the socials, our Instagram handle is at Gratitude Growth Podcast. Until next time, stay grateful and keep growing.